Today is a very work heavy sort of day. Have I'm filling up boxes with trash so that those can be taken out with the house trash. And then I have a package to take to Usagi Electric, or well, not take them, but mail. And then I found another bu bucket of wires which can be scrapped. Those nails can be scrapped. I'm slowly going through and I'm cleaning up the floor area first. I got it so I can walk over here. And I've gone through and thrown away a lot of things up here that I don't need. I'm just going to blow my nose on these instead of throwing them away. <laughs> Little sections of uh, cloth. I am really stirring up some stuff. Must have been a lot of mice in here. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of packing material that I saved, a lot of these boxes and whatnot, because I saved them for the for the for shipping things, and that's not quite going to be a real uh, thing I'm going to be doing out here. Because I'm going to be making stuff out here, and then taking it back to Pennsylvania, where over the course of the months, me and Thice will sell it. I won't be shipping from the workshop directly anymore. So, whenever I moved out to Pennsylvania, I lost access to my workshop. Oh, I just noticed something else I can toss. This rotted blank push stick. I'll burn that though. So, I lost access to my workshop and I felt like I lost my magic. I wasn't able to make anything. Anytime I tried to make stuff out there, I didn't have the right tools, I didn't have the right setup, and I got kind of... I got really upset and coming back here I'm still just disenchanted with my my magic because I I like to feel whenever I can just build something I like to feel like a, a wizard that can just poof something into existence with my mind even though I have to use my hands I like to just think about I can put something into existence and I don't quite feel like that right now because I was trying to revive that old ThinkPad battery. I finally got it. It was the the uh, thermal the thermal fuse that died. But man, it took so long for me to tinker with that to figure that out that I had to resolder the whole circuit board a couple times, and things were breaking because you know the more times you open something up, the more it's going to break. Well, so I'm back here, and I'm in the thick of it. It's not the it's not the the wor it's, not, it's not the best it's been because the workshop I, I, I did leave it in quite a state because I was just doing production and then I decided to hightail it out of here and so it was in a declining state but it was always in a bad state and I come back and I can't find shit and I realize you know what I never could find the right screwdriver because I never bought a set of screwdrivers I always had all these sets of screwdrivers that were just pieced together and all over the place. There was just stuff that I got for free or found in the woods or whatever. And I never actually bought enough screwdriver kits and then I never made a designated place for them. I have like four places for them. And I mean I, I found some more but I'm just gonna start organizing them more. Like my torches I have up above my my workbench. You know there's a place for them but I never really had a place for screwdrivers. My theory was just to have enough, uh, so many of them that I could reach anywhere and probably, probably grab one, but this doesn't doesn't work. So now that I'm coming back, I have a lot more of that emotional energy to get rid of things because it takes me emotional exertion in order to get rid of something that has a, a possibility. Oh man, like whatever m mice or whatever is in this place just mess with my uh, my sinuses. Um, it takes me a lot of effort to take something that I had an idea for and throw it away because I want to do it, but I can't do everything, and I have to decide that. I have to decide to get rid of a lot of things, especially the stuff that I could do it. But I don't want to do it, or I don't need to do it, and I need to, well, one thing is I'm not going to be cleaning up the workshop all that much this time, because I don't want to. I don't want to do the full rebuild of the workshop, but I want to get it cleaned up just enough 
to where it's at least presentable like it was before and I can do a small limited run of finishing the push sticks and then making a few of the notepads I wanted to make and then I can have something to bring back and sell on Etsy so even this I'm oh my god I'm gonna have such like a I'm swallowing so much snot from being in this in this workshop it's it's it was always like this though I have the mice problem because there's no there's no wall there's a gap the mice just come in and they hang out um So just like I need to look at my items and decide I just don't need it, I can look at my time and say I only have three more days, no two more days after this one, and no, I can't waste it on just cleaning up. There will be a time for that. I'm going to clean up a little bit though because my main priority is to get the white tarp shed cleaned out so I can do the x-ray machine. I think I can do that today. And I can scrap that, put that on the scrap pile and that'll be pretty good and then I'll have that freed up and I can start working on a little bit in here but I really think I need to start working on the manufacturing and then I have to also go back and film 1925 house videos okay so now that I'm sitting here I see a few more things that can go I'm just I'm gonna do that I'm gonna sit down and look around and see what I can do without because a lot of things are important in here and I don't want to just throw things away. Like plywood. I want to throw that plywood away. But what if I need it? And plywood's kind of expensive. And I don't make that much money. I'm hoping that I can get my workshop in a state where I can finally feel like I have that magic at my fingertips. Where I can just make something. I know I never will when I have to use tools to make something. But that's just how the world is. Oh well. I can get closer to what I want though. Alright, it's finally time to ship this. So I'm sending Nakazoto a uh, Texas Instruments TI-99-4A, which I got in like 2007 or 2008. And I had it at the foot of my bed for a decade. And as with most things, I bought it and asked questions later. But I realized that it was its own computer system, like the Commodore 64. And I waited to get more hardware for it. And it sat at the end of my bed for like 11 or 12 years. And... I never once found another peripheral or disc or anything for it at all. Meanwhile, on Usagi Electric, I see that he has a Texas Instruments computer all kitted out and he's missing the keyboard. Uh, he's missing the keyboard he wants and this is the keyboard he wants and it's like, well, well then that's why I've held on to it, to give it to him. And then also I picked up this calculator which I really like. But I think I have enough calculators. I'll send it to him and he'll probably fix it up. Dear Nakazoto, I have been enjoying your YouTube channel a lot recently. I was gladdened to see that you have a full TI-99 setup and I couldn't help but think of the old Texas Instruments computer I got for $5 in 2008 or so. I never once found anything else for it, so it sat at the foot of my bed until now. I'm glad to find out the ending to my chapter in its story. We are preservers and archivers of these historic objects, and I like to think that their story will be long and interesting like ours. Forgot the S there. I'm going to put it inside of it. He has to work for it. This box 
because I had quite a bit of history. One of my best friends from YouTube named Wes Schoenhofer, he comments sometimes, he, uh, he sent me a, gra a graphics card in this years ago. He gave me a really good deal. He sold it to me for only hundred bucks. It was a GTX 970. Real shame that graphics card died on me, but it was near the end of its life. It was understandable. I got I got a couple years of use out of that though. And that, came, and that came in this. And now I'm gonna send Usagi Electric this in the same box. Oh, almost fits. But I'll take that to the post office on the way back. Maybe burning cardboard and stuff was a mistake because now I think I can try and get this x-ray machine out or miraculously move the tent. Wow, there's a lot more control components in there than I thought. Oh man, guys. I am really dragging now. And I'm very thankful that I got the x-ray machine done. I think I have just enough energy left in me to do the next few scenes in the laptop battery video. And then I gotta go back home and lie down. I think, it doesn't seem like I got enough sleep last night either. Here's the moment of truth. So, I went until it uh, said it was 100% and it said it stopped charging. 100%. Alright, I need to put that away. Or at least just put it back here. It's the one bad thing about sides. They're very sharp and they're always out. So, gosh, I am... Yep, I am about dead. And I've... I technically have cleaned up more, because that's going to go to the scrapyard, but it feels like I've made more of a mess. Oh well. Laptop battery's doing fine, though. So I installed Windows 98, and boy, does it run a, a noticeable amount faster. Half-Life is a little bit glitchy, because it seems like there's some hard drive issues, but... NTFS seemed to work a little better, but the uh, the full screen one is like twice the frame rate of this Flyby 2, and then it's actually to the point where the original is like 60 FPS, which is pretty cool. Almost a little too fast, but I like it. It's so buttery smooth, and then the time corrected one does run faster as well. It's like a good, oh, 18 FPS? Seems about that. I thought it was scrolled smoother. On Windows 2000. I could be wrong though. This seems pretty good though. And with that, I'm happy with my computer tinkering for the night. Thank you very much for watching. This is what, day four?
for my trip back to Illinois. See ya. I also downloaded the uh, configuration utilities and the the fuel gauge and whatnot. <laughs>